Good evening, everyone. It's 5.30. I hope everyone has had a wonderful day. Um, my name is Vanita Dillon. I am the Director for New Students and Family Programs. Um, I'll be getting us started today. And today's topic, we have special presenters from ResLife. And um, if I sound distracted, it's because I'm also uh, managing the waiting room and making sure everyone who joins us can be moved into the session. So please forgive that. Um, like every session, I'm going to start real quick with um, what some of the future sessions are that you can see on your screen and then quickly cover um, what to expect on the 20th when you come in. Um, and then from there, we'll open it up to the presenters to introduce themselves and walk you through what they do and give you any pertinent information that uh, from their perspective um, should sit with the parents. Um, with that, on the 20th, when you arrive, you will be, uh, actually, before you arrive, uh, Tim here is responsible for sending you an assigned check-in time and information uh, about your res hall and roommates and his team works together to uh, get that information to your student. And based on that check-in time, you will arrive a few minutes early, we hope, uh, get parked in uh, lot O. You don't need to write any of this. We'll share this in an email with you. Uh, you'll arrive in lot O and then once you're parked, you'll go into our physical education and aquatic center, which is adjacent to the parking lot. We will welcome you there, give you a packet. Your packet will include your students or your, your student will get a packet and in it will be your mailbox key and your room key, uh, your, your port pass and uh, a few other pieces of information that are key for the next few days for your students. Um, and from there, we will take your students, uh, whisk them away into a large gym space where they can pick up their uniforms. They'll be provided a large tote box in which they can put all their uniforms and uh, parents will have an opportunity to meet some of the people that you're seeing on the little screen on um, uh, during these sessions uh, and some other people and be able to ask questions, get a feel for what the campus offers, um, know who you're calling when you do try to reach us. So from that, we, we expect that to last about 30 minutes. And from that, you will go back to your car and you will um, drive up to your allocated uh, rest hall. Um, we'll have some student helpers there who will uh, help unload your car and take you to your room. The person driving your car will turn around and go park the car back in lot O. Uh, please arrange a time and a spot for you to meet with them. Um, they might uh, want to walk up some stairs or just walk up the, the road to meet you in the rest hall, whatever it is that you decide to do. Um, after that, at two o'clock, we will meet you at the quad. Please uh, kind of familiarize yourself with the campus map. Um, where from two to three, your students will be learning how to get into formation, get to know their division mates and all of that. Um, while you will be invited to a quick uh, refreshment reception and then um, be able to go into the auditorium for a, uh, for a message from the president. After that, we will have a capping ceremony and the capping ceremony um, I've described is a short but uh, very meaningful and uh, tearful at times, um, but it'll be fun. And from that, you will have an opportunity to go out to run an errand and have dinner and do uh, that time window is from 3.30ish to 6.30. We'd like your students to be back uh, on campus by 6.30 and um, we have some programming for them that, that uh, evening. In fact, they'll be seeing Tim that evening. Um, and somewhere in that window from the time you arrive uh, to 6.30, uh, your student will have an opportunity to exchange any uniform items that didn't fit right. If they picked up a medium and they need a different size, then they can go back to PIAC and we will uh, stay open for you to make any of those exchanges. So keep that in mind. Um, that's what 
your day will look like. Please be sure to wear comfortable shoes. You'll be getting from one place to another throughout the day. We can get really warm and then really cold over just a matter of hours. So please dress in layers. Um, we have shared this information already, but please look at Caltrans, IAT Bay Area uh, updates and news. They have, um, they didn't check in with us and have created some closures um, on the 18th, 19th, 20th of August, which is when you will be arriving. So please check Caltrans. I will see if I can put that link in our chat in a little bit as well. But Caltrans, just Google that and they'll, it'll, it'll bring you to the website and give you some updates. Um, that's everything um, I wanted to share. Also, if you can't make it to do an, uh, to doing an errand, errand run, um, that day, worry not. On Friday night, we'll uh, have some shuttles running to Target. So if your student has forgotten something or if they realize they need something that was not on their uh, list, we'll, they'll be able to go to uh, Target and pick that up. So if you do not get the chance to do that, don't worry. Um, my next uh, spiel is about housekeeping. Please keep your devices on mute while the presenters are speaking. And um, as they are sharing information with you, um, feel free to put in your questions in chat. Uh, after they're done presenting, you can continue to put your questions in chat. I will field them out to the presenters. They'll respond if it is an off topic question um, and it is a topic from the past, I will do my best to field that. If it is uh, about something that future sessions are about, then we'll wait to um, get the experts to give you those answers. Um, with that, I'm going to invite Tim uh, and David to take it away. All right, thanks, Benita. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tim Westmoreland. I am the new Director of Residence Life here at Cal Maritime. I'm about two days shy of being here three months. So, um, doing a lot of learning myself. Um, new to Cal Maritime, but not new to the Res Life game. I've been doing this for about nine years. Came uh, from another school as the Assistant Dean and Director from Res Life there. So, very comfortable in this role and what I'm supposed to be doing, just trying to learn that Cal Maritime way. Um, but look forward to talking with you guys here soon and um, answering all your questions. So I'll just give it over to David. Hi. Um, hi, I'm David. I'm David Crispin. I'm what's called the cadet housing director on campus. I'm actually a student. Uh, this will be my senior year as a global studies and maritime affairs student. Uh, my first and only year as cadet housing director. I spent one year before this as an RHO in uh, Upper, which is one of our first year buildings where I'm sure many of these students are going to be living. And um, a, the year before that as a student employee for the housing department. Um, and I guess if we're playing popcorn, I'll give it to Melinda. Hello, everyone. I'm Melinda Balfour. I am the lead res lift coordinator for the office, and I work with McAllister Res Hall. So if you're going to be residing in McAllister Hall, I'll be your designated coordinator for any uh, questions or concerns that you have. And I'll pass it over to Matt. Awesome. Thank you, Melinda. Um, so I'm Matt Donovan. I'm the residence life coordinator. I'd be overseeing lower residence hall as well as upper residence hall for the building for first year students. I'm excited for the year. And I apologize um, to Melinda and Matt both. I am so sorry. I didn't realize you were down somewhere else off my screen. So please accept my apologies for not no mentioning worries, you. No. Um, and welcome. Back to you, Tim. Um, all right. So kind of talk a little bit about, um, sort of, I guess, my role um, with the cadets, the families, um, and just the, the department in general, and what some of my thoughts are about what we're going to be doing this year, and then answer more questions at the end of all this. Um, but mainly, primarily, my role um, is going to be just over overseeing the hospitality and service side of residence life, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more here in a bit. Um, but a lot of what I do is that behind the scenes, just making sure we are heading in the right, right direction, long-term uh, plan-wise, looking at things like compliance assessment, making sure things are um, up to date where they need to be, ensuring that our numbers are where they need to be, uh, ensuring that cadets are getting what they need, just kind of all that boring busy work behind the screen is a lot of what I do. Um, 
In the same vein, a lot of that is just making sure that the campus culture, specifically with residence life and how it interacts with Cal Maritime as a whole, um, just to make sure we are bridging those gaps um, with residence life. And I'm sure we'll see with some of these questions, we kind of bleed into everything naturally, and especially being a four-year residential campus um, and beyond, we're kind of always attached to everyone. And we know a lot about a lot. And so my goal with that is like, how do I make that more official? How do I make that more, how do I make those partnerships stronger? Um, how does our department support that and put, basically put you in an environment or put your student in an environment to succeed? Um, but a lot of that means I'm staring at Excel sheets and trying to get numbers done. So my part's actually kind of boring. Um, but that being said, um, I do oversee kind of the entirety of that department. And so anything that the coordinators are doing, we work very closely to make sure it gets done and um, you all are taken care of. But for the more fun part, I will go ahead and give it back to David so he can actually talk to you about more of the day-to-day -day experience and how uh, the staff works with you all. Um, yeah, so our staff consists of um, not only just the four or five, yeah, five of us that are here now, no, four, sorry, four of us that are here now, I'm sorry, <laughs> math isn't my thing. Um, it also includes uh, what are known as RHOs. RHOs would be called RAs on most other campuses. These are the people that are going to interact directly with students in the day-to-day. -day. They're going to be the people that live next door to many of the students. Um, we have about five RHOs for every building. Um, each RHO will have a specific group of students um, that they will oversee. Um, that doesn't mean that they're stuck with just those students. Uh, RHOs tend to branch out, make friends with students across um, all residence halls and across all divisions and things like that. Um, these are the people that the students come to when they need help but they're also the people that students come to when they wanna share their successes and uh, you know things like test scores or uh, they want advice on how to go about something. Uh, these are the people that really spend the most amount of time with the students. Um, the RHOs are overseen by the professional staff that are here now. So that's Matt and Melinda. I suppose I'll chime in here a little bit as well. Um, the residence hall officers also get the opportunity to host the activities we call them programs here in the residence halls and it's about once a week we have some kind of special activity whether it be something recreational like a competition sports game it could be karaoke it could be a movie night all kinds of things like that so each of them are also overseeing that and making sure there's fun things to do in the evenings you know when people want to wind down and not think about schoolwork and stuff like that so there's a lot of fun things that get to happen in the residence halls as well and um do you want to talk a little bit about the one-on-one -on -one process david yeah, sure, I can take that. The one-on-one -on -one process is, it's actually kind of a new process to us. It's something that was um, started uh, last year. And that is, uh, it's called a one-on-one -on -one or an intentional conversation. This is something that the RHOs do. Um, it is a scheduled sit-down meeting with each one of their residents in which they, um, you know, get to know them better. They hope that the student gets to know the RHO better, but they ask them very intentional con or intentional questions about things like, their experience on campus, their relationship with their roommates, um, how their classes are going, how they're, um, you know, how, how are they enjoying things like the events that are going on, um, the food on campus, the facilities conditions of the residence halls. And it's a way that RHOs can sort of collect and actually put that data into a hard spreadsheet. So that way the professional staff or um, someone like Tim can look at it and say, okay, well, if these students are talking about these things with their RHOs and their RHOs are documenting it, um, we need to find a way to either fix these things or change these things. It gives it another layer of like students actually creating efficient change um, by having these conversations. Thank you, David. Um, Melinda, anything to add? I would say for the RHO staff and part of our department operations, so RHOs will also be on a on-call rotation for the res hall communities after hours. So essentially that means 
anytime when essential business is closed, so generally after 5 p.m. during the business week or 24-7 on Saturday and Sunday, we do have our staff available for anything that comes up in regards to roommate issues or if there's a situation, maybe homesickness or something that's really difficult for one of you that you're going through, you need some additional support, um, we are here to assist with that. So when you all arrive on campus, you'll have access to all of our building phone numbers and how to reach our RHO staff is if there is a particular issue. Um, we also work very closely with our police department on campus as well, and we have that partnership. And so we do have a layer of safety and security um, that we take very seriously to make sure that all of you are safe. And if there are anything that is happening, um, that there are different ways to report it and make sure that you're getting assistance on the spot. I'm going to jump in and, and give more of that background real quick, um, just to kind of cover some of that. So um, very similar to what she said, we, we basically always have some sort of level of security or access for our residents. Um, for the pro staff specifically, we are on call 24-7. We, anytime we are, we are needed on campus, day or night, no matter the holiday, whatever it is, somebody is available to be here. And our resp response time um, is, is pretty quick. Um, again, also having Cal Maritime PD on campus with us, we do work very closely with them and make sure that um, we're sharing information and doing, doing as much as we can to make sure that everyone is safe. Um, but that being said, it really kind of comes down to the relationship you start to form with your RHO, and then you can kind of have those kind of conversations. Initially, early on, it's very um, nerve wracking and you're kind of nervous um, talking to these people who are in this like authority role and you really don't quite know it. And then all of a sudden, 24 hours later, you guys are talking about anything and everything under the sun. Um, so that's kind of your first level is working with your RHOs. And then you'll always see your RLCs and hopefully see myself running around ragged at some point during the year. But no matter what, our coverage tiers are always here all the time. We are always keeping an eye on everything that's going on on campus. Um, beyond that, we also work with the administration. If we do um, hear concerns from cadets and students and residents, whoever, if that's brought to us, we definitely take it up the chain and say, this is what we're hearing. These are some of the trends. What, what can we do? What's our response? How do we, how do we uh, support that? Um, and then you'll see us all the time. We'll be doing kind of assessments. You'll hear from our office. You'll, re you'll receive you know, official um, reach outs on, this is what we're looking at for next semester. What are your thoughts here? Or this is where we're planning what would you like to see? Um, so we do definitely keep that line of communication open with you all as well. And speaking of official communication, um, I know we um, are getting close to that move-in date. And so we were able to get the information out for um, your assignment and the move-in process, all of that through the email. So that came from our housing at csum.edu email. Um, and that came out very, very recently. We were finally able to get some last minute um, approvals from the university to sign off and get the information out there. So I know a lot of you have been worried or worried, probably a little worried, um, and just wondering when that email comes in. And so it should be there. So please check your um, your CSUM account. That's where it goes to. We send everything there. Um, so check that. And if you do have any questions, please respond, housing at csum.edu. Um, we'll make sure to get all those questions answered. Um, I believe it says it in there as well. Um, as you see, we have Matt and Melinda here. We're supposed to also have an additional RLC who we are currently in the process of doing interviews for. So there will be three total RLCs here, um, but with move-in coming up soon, we have RHO training starting next week. Um, and just the time of year, um, we're kind of doing a lot all the time. So if you reach out to us, just give us a little bit of time to get back to you, but we'll make sure to answer all those questions that you may have. Um, so again, please check your email, get that information, and we'll kind of go from there. And a couple other things I want to talk about before I let them talk about more of the fun stuff is just some of the um, policies, expectations, kind of the things we do behind the scenes just to um, make sure everyone is safe and enjoying their time here. And part of that community building is just also ensuring that our policies, expectations, and are being followed. Um, these things include like the big one, we always make sure to talk about drugs, alcohol, smoking. Don't do that here. Doesn't matter how old you are, any of that. We just, we do not allow that on campus or in our residence halls. Um, same thing with noise. We um, have designated quiet hours from uh, 10 p.m. at night to 8 a.m. the next morning on school nights and then 12 a.m. to 10 a.m. on weekends. Um, but beyond that, we also have something called courtesy hours, or, which are essentially always in effect, which is just being courteous to your neighbors and those around you. I shouldn't be able to walk down a hallway and hear all your stuff away at the end of there. Um, and then with the guest policy, um, currently it's no Cal Maritime guests and then no more than four cadets in the uh, bedroom at any given time just to make sure we're being safe. 
That being said, a lot of this, especially early on, is a lot to take in. And kind of like Vanita said, uh, we know you're going to have questions like this later on and just with all these words and policies and guidelines being given. So that being said, we will also be having building meetings that first night whenever you move in where we're going to review everything with you. And then I will make sure that everyone also has access to it on our website. Our policies will be sending it out. Everything you need. So you don't need to memorize it now. You don't need to worry about all that. Whenever you can't sleep at three in the morning, you want to do some awesome reading. I'll make sure to have give you something that you can uh, read through there. But all of this we will have posted everywhere and make sure that you have the ability to see um, what, resources, what resources you have um, and what our community guidelines are. And the other thing I want to talk about just so we're all on the same page with that is here we are something called a bifurcated department, which I would hazard a guess. You probably don't know what that means because I didn't know what that meant. Um, but basically housing and residence life are split in half and we are the residence life side of that. So what that means is we are the hospitality, the service side, the interaction piece with all of you. So making sure that um, you are getting that community environment, making sure that the crisis response is taken care of, making sure that we have activities, the programming as Matt talked about, um, just really that engagement piece. That is what we do. Um, the Cal Maritime Corporation is our housing side of that. So we are residents life, they are housing. And what that means is they deal with all the behind the scenes stuff like facilities upkeep, um, doing maintenance, custodial, doing, running the numbers, doing the budget, working with IT, um, access to rooms, all of that. So they do all that technical side. And more often than not, you will not interact with them. We're kind of that in-between piece. Um, so with that, um, while we do, we will work with you on things like work orders and all that, it doesn't necessarily come directly through us. Now, my goal is not to make it to where you have to figure all that on your own. We will always be that referral source. We will always be that communication piece between you and the corporation, um, as well as work, walk you through on um, how to get things fixed, how to talk to IT if, you know, if your card isn't working, whatever it takes. We will work with you on that. Um, but I just want to make sure we're super clear about that because it does get confusing at times if you see things like, why are people talking about the corporation? Isn't that the same thing as Res Life? Not quite, but we do work very closely with them to make sure um, our cadets have a, a good and enjoyable experience when they're on campus. Um, that being said, don't worry, all of this will be on the website if it isn't already, and then we'll make sure that you have access to this um, anytime you need. But the biggest thing to take away from this is we're always here. We love what we do. I'm not old enough yet where I haven't been run out quite yet. So I, I love doing this. I love being up all hours of the night. I love these programs. Um, I just love that student engagement piece. And I know Matt and Melinda absolutely feel the same. And I'll let them talk about that here in a second. Uh, but just for the parents as well, just knowing that we've all done this, the collective experience, experience in the room is sitting somewhere around, what, 19, 20-ish years already. I mean, like we, we live and breathe res life. We know what we're doing here. And we want to make sure that you enjoy it. Um, but I am tired of hearing my own voice, so I'm going to turn it back over to David uh, to talk about something a little more specific when it comes to uh, some of these one-to-ones. I really want to make sure we kind of touch on at least one more time um, what the intentional interaction piece is with that and what we are looking to do with that going forward. So if you could just talk about that a little bit more in depth, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, sure. I'm actually going to, because I know we had a conversation about it earlier, I'm going to hand that to Matt real quick to let him take over that. Um, do you have a point, Vanita? I keep seeing you put your hand up. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I just wanted to uh, reiterate that the audience today is really families, uh, parents who um, are, are wanting to know what your role, role is and your interactions with students. Uh, I, Melinda shared with me that she, she recognized some students on the call as well, but essentially uh, we're talking with families and letting them know uh, how, how we run the Res Life uh, program. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. All right, back to the one-on-one -on -one stuff. So one-on-ones are pretty cool. It's basically offering the cadets around campus like an additional level of support. Like there are multiple levels of support across campus, whether it be counselors, or their professors or advisors, these kinds of things. But you, with the one-on-ones, you get it from like a real student to student level. And the initial ones, some people are really talkative, some are a little shy at first, but it's just kind of getting to know your RHO. Each of our residence hall officers, the RHOs, they have about anywhere from 25 to 40 people, depending on which residence hall they're in. But these meetings, they go over things like, how's your experience so far? Do you have any questions that I can answer? You know, do you, how's classes going? Is there any Thing you'd like help with the suggestions also 
you know, are you, how's, how are you getting along with your roommates, stuff like this. And we walk them through, like some people have questions about, oh, how do I mediate this conflict or these kinds of things? And we train our residence hall offers on how to, residence hall officers, excuse me, on how to deal with these things. So these are the kind of things to be talking about in the one-on-ones, as well as do you have any suggestions or ideas for our programming or our student activities? And we got a lot of, you know, we get a lot of good input on that kind of stuff. Like, oh, I'd really like to have a wiffle ball game or I'd really like to watch this movie or do these kinds of things. So we actually get the, a lot of feedback, good feedback from our cadets in our residence halls. And we use that information and we, you know, make all kinds of fun things happen. Anyone else want to chime in on that one? Yeah. So is there any other part of your relative roles um, that families would be interested in, in knowing before we um, hit the chat for fielding questions to you? Any last words? And then I can read out the questions that you guys can answer. Gotcha. Um, I think the biggest thing is just to um, please reach out to our main housing at CSUM email. Um, that's where we take most of our um, questions that we'll get from parents and families as well. Um, that way we can make sure it does get addressed. Um, so if you do have any questions between now and then, please don't hesitate to reach out. We know we're, we're kind of at that busy time for everyone. Um, and then even throughout the year, it doesn't end whenever the cadet gets here. We don't get you in there and just leave you be. We're, we're responsive and working with families and, and making sure to keep you in touch in what we're doing as a whole. So that is definitely something I wanna make sure we do going forward that you just kind of know what's going on in res life in general. So you know what's going on with your student in general. So you can be involved in that process and just know um, about their experience on campus. So as long as the biggest thing is just, we are open to communication all the time. We look forward to hearing from you and just want you to know that you, your student is a good safe space. And if you ever have any questions, we are always available to, to answer them. But that is all I got. Anyone else with anything to add before we hit chat? Um, I'm going to throw in a question while I um, scroll. Um, I know parents often want to know about lofting of beds and uh, such, and I know there's been some changes in how we um, handle that. So if someone could speak to it, can and that would be really awesome. And then I'll, I'll start reading questions from chat. You got it, David or Melinda? I could take this one. So... Um... Some of our halls, they have different um, sets of bed um, furniture um, just because of the hall has different types of sizes and whatnot and space and we're trying to maximize the size of the space for you all coming in or for the cadets coming in. So most of the beds are at a newer um, condition or a newer model where you are able to loft the bed on your own. Um, but for whatever reason, if you cannot do that, definitely on move a day. If you see an RHO or one of us coordinators, please stop us and reach out to us. Or you can send us an email at housing at edu, And we can look into how we can go about lofting your bed for you. Um, we may follow up and you may have to put in a work order in order to get that process done. And if that's the case, hopefully that will be completed within the first two weeks or so. But again, if you're not able to loft your bed on your own, or if you have any other questions or concerns about the furniture in your room, definitely let us know once you get here on campus and we'll take care of it. Thank you. Um, I know we talked a little bit uh, in detail about one-on-one -on -one conversations, but did we mention exactly how often these are held with students? Um, one-on-ones are done twice a year, once a semester. So one in the first semester, one in the second semester. But those are just the like formal conversations. There's nothing stopping a student from reaching out and talking to their RHO every day <laughs> if they need to. Um, you know, we're here for the students. Uh, these are just, like I said, the very formal, very intentional ones, the scheduled ones, one or twice a year, first semester, second semester. Thank you, David. Um... Just so uh, I put it in the chat, but just to share what RHO, that's just language to us. These are residence uh, hall directors, that uh, uh, residence hall officers. That's the acronym RHO. Um, will the freshman be in McAllister? 
I'll take this one. So yes, we will have some first year students in McAllister Hall, but majority of them will be in upper residence hall. And that's because we do not currently have enough space to house the entire incoming class in just one res hall. So we'll have some overflow in McAllister, but majority of the students will be in upper residence hall. Thank you, Melinda. I have a um, unrelated question about fees from Manuel. Manuel, will you please uh, give me, um, do me a favor and send this to me at orientation at csum.edu email. I'll get you an answer to it uh, as soon as possible. Um, moving on, should my son check his Cal, uh, Cal email or personal email? Is this regarding... Um, some information that was put in there. Yeah, it's probably talking about the uh, housing um, assignment email that went out today. And okay. all of our um, emails going forward, we always email it to the student's official CSUM email account. That's how we will, we almost will never email to a personal email account unless it's like in the very beginning of the year whenever you're starting or in the summer whenever you're starting that process of becoming a student here. But everything will go to your official um, CSUM email or the student's official CSUM email account. Thank you, Tim. Where should students keep their personal scuba and fishing equipment. I can take that one, I suppose. Um, we had a space actually right outside Upper Residence Hall. There's a hose people can use to wash the salt off of their stuff. Um, they're welcome to bring it in the residence hall if they have a sealed container that they can put it in. Um, sometimes during the year, it's, it's gonna be okay if you wanna hang your wetsuit, but I would suggest that anyone who has, is interested in scuba gear, stuff like that, surfing gear, please just get some kind of container that you can bring it in so we're not tracking salt through the residence halls and on the carpets and things like that. But yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, how or when do we uh, find out which division our cadet is in and who their roommate is? I can take this one. So your division assignment and the roommate information is included in the room assignment email that went out. So please have your cadet check their email because that information is included in there in that letter that they received today. Thank you. Uh, what size trash bags should students consider bringing? I don't know the exact size. Um, I don't know if anyone actually does know the exact size <laughs> of the faces, but um, I know that the Costco household trash bags fit perfectly inside of those trash cans, not the industrial ones, the household ones. Great. We are all going to go to Costco. Um, thank you, David. Uh, can you talk about guests? Is that overnight guests or can they have uh, guests come to campus during the day? So I'll take this one and Tim can chime in. Um, for the last couple of years, we we're operating with COVID and I know that COVID is still around and still in existence. So our guest policy may fluctuate a little bit and we'll make sure we'll communicate to our residents what our current policy is. Um, but students generally are allowed to have guests um, and there isn't any formal check-in or check-out system. So it's based on honor system, making sure that you're following our policies and our protocols. Um, if for whatever reason, if there is, let's say an increase of COVID cases on campus or things, something happens and we need to revamp our guest policy, we will do that. Um, we just need to take it day by day and see how the situation is going. But as of right now, students can have people on campus, they can have guests, um, but there are certain limitations to how many people you can have in your room. Um, with an overnight guest, we do have a policy around how many times someone can stay overnight within a two week window. Um, so your roommate or you, your cadet and their roommate need to be cognizant of that and making sure they're following protocols and policies. And all of that is outlined in our handbook. Yes, and I'll also say, um, even having a conversation um, with our health office today, um, one of the things we're worried about is there's a potential surge going on. And so they're currently monitoring that. And basically what will happen is probably about every week, every other week, we'll be checking in with that office and just asking, you know, what's the update on this? What are you, what are you anticipating? As well as getting information from our dean's office and just the administration in general on how we should proceed. Um, but much like Melinda said, um, if these changes do happen, uh, we'll make sure to communicate that to everyone in the building 
um, multiple ways so everyone knows what's going on. So we, our goal is not to shock you and one day do one thing and the next day and do the next. We will be very upfront on if we do need to make changes, here are the changes and here, why, here are why the changes are being made. Um, but beyond that, the goal, like she said, it, it's the honor system. You, students are in college, we're gonna trust them to act like responsible adults and we will still be monitoring everything when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, we want them to enjoy their time here and be able to have people come over. But a lot of it is based on safety policy is really what we kind of go off of. So um, if anything does change, we will always say reach out and give you ample notice as to why. Thank you. What type of flooring uh, in each of the rooms? So if you could separate it out, if it's different for McAllister versus Upper. I could take this one. So in both Upper um, and in McAllister, most of the rooms are not carpeted. We do have some rooms though in Upper Residence Hall that do have carpet. Um, but other than that, it's just like a standard non carpeted surface in majority of the rooms in both McAllister and Upper. Vinyl, right? Like linoleum, sorry, it's linoleum. Yeah. Okay. Um, do the rooms have a bulletin board already? You don't believe there are uh, bulletin boards installed in the room. Uh, no, so you would need to bring your own. Um, when it comes to that and hanging up stuff about the room, we just ask that you um, are careful to not damage anything on there. There's uh, one of the things that I've always seen used is some of the 3M um, attachments do really well whenever you're putting stuff up and taking it down without leaving residue on there. So I've seen that work well with the bulletin boards um, that some of the students bring. Do rooms have AC and or heat? I believe most of the residence halls do not with the exception of one, um, but it's nothing built in with um, AC. I'm not quite sure about heat. That's actually a good question. I see Melinda knows that one. For heating, centralized heating. So at a certain point in the semester, campus facilities, they'll turn on the heating for each of the buildings. Um, is there a campus chaplain? Um, any mass offered on Sundays or if there's a shuttle to a local church? I can take that one, actually. There is there right. is a campus chaplain. Um, I do not know the day off the top of my head that he visits. Um, I want to say it changes to semester to semester. There is not um, a mass of any denomination offered on campus. Um, and there is a club um, known as InterVarsity. It is a non-denominational club um, that does do, well, not necessarily a shuttle, but a student run, students bringing students uh, to certain masses. Uh, but like I said, that is a club. You would be able to find more information out about them uh, during orientation week, <laughs> when we have a uh, club tabling, which uh, I'm sure we'll end up in one of the schedules you get. So um, the chaplain is on um, on campus Thursdays from nine to eleven in Morro Cove. So uh, when your students get familiar with the buildings, they'll be able to see that um, there's someone uh, every week. Uh, I want to say they're here definitely nine to eleven, but they might be staying till noon. Um, and any trips out to uh, church would. Um, would need to be arranged with uh, with a new friend or uh, Uber. There, there are no shuttles per se that um, go out. Uh, what is needed to loft the bed on their own? Um, it is useful if you have a rubber ballot, which our office, we have some as part of our checkout inventory. So if you don't have any tools yourself or you don't bring a rubber mallet with you, um, definitely seek out one of the housing staff members and we'll make sure that you have the tools to loft your bed. Uh, do the rooms have microwaves and small refrigerators? The rooms do have small refrigerators and we have little communal spaces for cooking. And inside those, we do have microwaves, toaster ovens, these kinds of things. Do you recommend mattress toppers? Yes, um, we use something, I believe here, and please, Melinda, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's generally um, these blue mattresses, which are California uh, Twin XLs is what they are. Um, and they're very specific to um, most university residence halls. Um, and so they are built to last. Now, they're not uncomfortable, but they are built to last. And so I usually strongly recommend getting some sort of mattress topper to make it uh, just a little bit easy. If you like firm mattresses, you will be in heaven. Um, but if you like it to be a little softer, I'd strongly recommend getting a mattress topper. 
If I can jump in on that one, I was about to say, I like a firm mattress. I don't use a topper, but it is a hard mattress. I do recommend a mattress protector though. Uh, those are the plasticky seal ones that you can buy. Is there COVID testing on campus? Um, Yes, there is COVID testing on campus. Um, you do not, you are not required to have a vaccine. Everything, it is strongly recommended though, um, but there is not, uh, oh, we do allow, we do have COVID testing on campus through our health center. Um, but most, their, all of their policies were specifically regarding COVID and everything else is posted on their website as well. Um, can they bring a rug? Is that a rug? Rug, yes, like a little. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there um, certain hours for lights out? Uh, does uh, work out times, uh, workout times, roommates are on watch together or coming and going at different times? I uh, can't speak on the watch. Maybe one of somebody else can, but as far as when it's talking about lights out or just coming and going at different times, no, there is no designation when it comes to that. Um, it really kind of comes down to the, the quiet hours and essentially just not disturbing your neighbor and or your roommate. Um, something that we work with all of our incoming cadets on is like a roommate agreement to make sure everyone's on the same page of what those rules are in your room because you might be a little bit different than the people down the hall. Um, but beyond that, as Melinda said, there's no formal check-in, check-out process on um, when it comes to lights out or anything in those rooms. Um, but again, we do guide that with the roommate agreement, and then that's what the RHOs are there for, is to go around and just to make sure that everyone is being respectful um, of the time and space and not disturbing anyone, specifically, uh, again, with watch, with how early everyone would have to get up. Um, but no, there's nothing formal in place for that. That being said, if a policy is continually broken, um, a student will end up having a conversation um, either with myself, potentially um, uh, the Dean of Cadets, or, and look at you know, what are some of the options we can have going forward. And some of that might be loss of privilege with guests and things like that. We try not to jump into that immediately. It's how can we work through this and get everyone on the same page. Um, but beyond that, we don't start with anything heavy handed when they come in. We, work with them to make sure that they have, they're all on the same page with that roommate agreement and then we'll go from there. So there's a question about whether or not they have to put their beds together when they arrive. Um, uh, maybe maybe describing a little bit more in more detail what lofting means would, would, would answer that. So the beds are assembled already. The beds are going to be assembled in a, um, they're gonna be assembled exactly the same. They're gonna mirror one another and they're going to be just slightly above the floor. Um, like if you were to roll out of it, you wouldn't hurt yourself. Um, they come assembled like that. Lofting the bed is when you're going to disassemble it and then reassemble it on its highest setting. So you have space underneath for something like your desk, um, a table lamp or something like that. Uh, people put their uh, computers down there. Uh, this is a process that the cadets do themselves. And I did actually see another question about if they can do this on move-in day. Theoretically, they could, um, but move-in day can be kind of busy. There's a little bit of back and forth between certain things. Um, and also your roommate's going to be moving in at the same time. Um, so that might be something that just makes more sense to wait a couple days on. Um, that mallets, like Melinda said, will always be available. It's not something you got to do right away. Thank you. Um, what size TV can students bring and can it be mounted on the wall? I don't think we have a size requirement, um, but I would say that they cannot be mounted on the wall because that would mean we're nailing and drilling in there. Uh, facilities would come beat me up if I allowed that. So we can't allow them mm. to be mounted on the wall. Uh, what size rugs do you recommend for the students to have in their rooms? I don't know, David. I was going to say, I mean, as big as big or as small as, as you want, really. Um, I want to say online, you can find the square footage of the rooms for each of the residence halls. So I would kind of plan around that. If you are one of the, or the kind of person that's going to want all your stuff to one side of the room, might go with a smaller one. Uh, but if you think you're going to share with your roommate, you want to have one that uh, bridges the gap, a, a bigger one. But uh, really, that's, that's going to be up to your preference. Thank you. Um, should they be bringing an iron and an ironing board? I'll take that as well, too. Um, the khaki uniforms that students are given out, um, 
I don't know what they're made out of, but they don't wrinkle. <laughs> or at least in my experience, they don't wrinkle. But if they do, uh, the recommendation to most students is when you're taking a shower, um, just put it in there with you and the steam will sort of work its way through it. But I wouldn't bring an iron or an ironing board. I, I don't personally know anyone who did. How much closet space is there? Each room has like some armoire dressers. Um, each room will have one. Um, it's about three feet wide, about and, uh, maybe a foot and a half deep. So they have those armoires. There's some other dressers too in the room. Um, do they need um, to bring a desk lamp? Or is one provided? That's up to preference again. Um, each room has overhead lights. Uh, kind of like the one that's above me right now. Um, if they want more light, like a desk lamp, then yeah, um, they should bring one. But just to kind of settle furniture, um, there's going to be provided to students, there's going to be a desk, a desk chair, a bed, a closet, and some sort of chest of drawers. Um, so each student on each side is going to get those five items, a desk, a chair, a closet, a bed, and a chest of drawers. Thank you. Um, I would also it. say just real quick, um, it, uh, you can move it, set up the room however you want. We just ask that you keep the furniture in there. So if you also want to bring in additional items, however you want to get all that set up, more than fine. But we just ask that you keep the furniture in the room and then whatever uh, crazy layout you decide to come up with is up to you too. Do, um, yeah, so that answers the next question. How do you set up and can they split and put things on? That's, it's up to the students. They'll have an agreement and they'll uh, work with each other and make the space uh, usable and, and friendly for themselves. Wow, that was a lot of questions uh, that you guys fielded. Thank you. Um, so as always, I um, request those who for any reason were not able to type up their questions because they're driving or couldn't get to their keyboard for some reason, uh, please feel free to unmute and uh, ask your question verbally. And um, once you're done with your question, please put yourself back on mute and uh, our, our presenters will be happy to respond. All right. Um, oh, uh, are the bathrooms community style or in the rooms? For those two, the two residence halls, um, they are community style. Um, and then uh, when it comes to cleaning them, we just ask that you take care of your area, but we will have the facilities team uh, come in there and clean the, clean the bathrooms. Oh, I like Vinny's question. If my kid feels homesick, can he borrow the chicken nugget for the night? I will say yes, because I'm on camera and there's a lot of people watching. And so, of course, I would allow that. Um, I will be homesick as soon as the chicken nugget leaves the office. So just know that I'm making a great sacrifice. But uh, if that is what is ne necessary for the student to not feel homesick, they can take the chicken nugget. Or we can take them to McDonald's and get them the real thing, the real meal as, deal. I will buy them as many chicken nuggets as it takes <laughs> for them to let me keep mine. So whatever it takes. There you guys. This is being recorded. So um, are the res halls co-ed? They are, um, but they are matched by floor and assignment. And so Melinda wants to talk a little bit about how that assignment process goes. So yes, both of our halls are co-ed. For upper residence hall, our layout is divided by floor and wing. So as you all know, majority of our cadets, the population is majority male. Um, so for upper residence hall, we'll have 
women and men on a second floor split between two wings. And then on the third floor, it'll be all male, majority male. And then an upper, in the gallery, so sorry, um, we have a little more flexibility in terms of rooms. And so um, it's very similar in terms of half of the floor will be split or majority of the floor will be of a certain gender. But yes, we do have men and women living in close quarters or on the same floor, or potentially in the same wing, depending on which hall you are in. Thank you. Um, are there checks for clean, cleanliness of the rooms? I can't talk. Cleanliness of the rooms. Cleanliness of the rooms. Uh, so nothing designated specifically for cleanliness, but we do something called health and safety checks, which encompasses that. Um, so the RHO staff will come by and put eyes on the room and just kind of look for the entirety of, of the state of the room. So it can include cleanliness, it can include fire safety, it can include just general maintenance. Um, it's just how we come and check up on the space over the years, over the, over the semester. Um, we will do multiple checks just in general, um, but that will be one of the ones that's outlined. It's in our policy. We will give ample notice so we're not just keying in and looking at your space. Um, but it's one of the things we will do just to make sure that the space is in um, um, is being taken care of. We also do things in the beginning. We will do something like a room inventory form where you can kind of let us know how, what the state of the room is. And then when you are checking out for break periods, you'll check out with our staff and we will also be putting eyes on the room then. But in the middle of the se semester, we'll do something called a health and safety check and give you ample time and notice of what we're looking for, how long it's going to be, what you need to do to pass. And if you don't pass, what you got to do to follow up with that. Um, Sally is asking about a background. Um, is that mine? Uh, if it is, that's it my has own. To be yours. <laughs> it's my own art. It's no um, um, no competition with the chicken nugget, but um, it's something that is part of a book that I've uh, written for children. Um, are washers and dryers located on each floor? They are not on each floor. They are also community style, but each residence hall has washers and dryers. Um, so upper is three floors and the washers and dryers are located on the first floor. And McAllister is also three floors. And correct me if I'm wrong, Melinda, they're on the second floor. Yeah, second and third floor. Oh, okay, second and third floor. So uh, while we're on the topic of uh, washers and dryers, could you also really uh, quickly tell us what that costs and how do, do students pay for those um, cycles of washing and drying? I don't remember offhand how the cost is. I think Melinda could jump in and save me there. Um, but whenever you're doing that, we also, uh, there's an app that they can use to preload money onto the card as well as designate the time. Um, and then they can also use that to submit work orders straight to uh, the company that oversees them so we can get service out quicker. Uh, we do keep eyes on that ourselves and submit the work orders, but it can all be done through the app. I don't remember what the app is called, so maybe one of you two can help me with that. The app is called Speed Queen. Um, their Speed Queen app. You can also use quarters. Um, you don't have to use the app if you have quarters lying around. And how much is it? So in terms of pricing, so um, for washing, I think the minimum cost is $2, depending on load size and what type of wash you're trying to do, like heavy duty or if it's a light wash. So minimum $2, and then I think it's $225, $250 max. And then for drying, I believe the minimum is $1.50, and then it also ranges in price depending on if you're doing delicate or no heat or a heavy duty dry. Um, so it would be anywhere from a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy five to two dollars. Thank you, guys. That's uh, often uh, a question uh, from parents. What cleaning supplies are recommended? Uh, generally, when I've seen this, it's just uh, one about what you and your roommate agreed to, specifically when it comes to strong scents and everything like that. Other things I uh, asked are things that won't damage the furniture, like strong bleaches or stuff like that. Um, but realistically, it's it's a lot of it is up to you on what you want, as long as it won't damage the carpet, the furniture, stain, anything like that. And as long as you're being cognizant of what your roommate could handle when it comes to, again, how strong those scents are and everything like that. All right, you guys have done such a great job. I'm the questions are slowing down. Uh, are vacuums available or bring your bring their own? 
Uh, I would say bring your own. Um, generally, when we will start doing checkout periods, we'll get some extra cleaning supplies on hand just to help out. So for like checkouts or going home for break or stuff like that, um, we'll try and have some extra stuff provided. But generally for your own maintenance and upkeep during the semester, we would suggest you bring your own back. Um, that reminded me of a, a question. Could, uh, could we talk a little bit about how um, checkouts go, when can students uh, during a holiday stay back, when not, um, mm -hmm. how clean does a room have to be between semesters and all of that good stuff, just the transition from fall to spring? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what will happen is when we start getting close to that, um, we will start getting tons of information and start having additional meetings and emails go out, basically what our closing and checkout process is going to be. Um, it'll include things like what exactly you need to do to leave the room in an acceptable state. We'll give you a checklist that you got to go through, how you sign up for a time for our staff member to come through and collect your key or check the room and just make sure it's good. Um, and if you want to stay, we will also include information on how you can apply for what it's called break housing officially. Um, and then you will give all that information on um, what that process is like. We will generally start that about uh, two to three weeks before we start getting into those finals periods time. So you will have plenty of time to make adjustments, schedule your time, know what you got to do before you leave. Um, but at the very end of it all, let's just say you missed every single piece of information we sent out. You'll still have a staff member go through your room with you so we can give you all the information there. So no matter what, we will have plenty of information and guides on how to check out effectively and correctly going forward. Um, but beyond that, um, like I said, we'll have all that information information posted well in advance. Um, so one uh, follow up question on that is um, the longer vacation uh, around Christmas, the winter break, if students are staying back, is there a cost? I can take this one. So for Thanksgiving and spring breaks, our res halls are open. So we don't charge any fees to stay on campus. But for winter break, uh, yes, if you do want to stay on campus during the winter break session, we do charge a daily fee. Um, currently, it's $25 a day. And then um, for summer, um, it changes depending on what activity we have going on, but we generally have um, some years we will have a summer housing program if there is space to do that and students are allowed to stay on campus. A fee is charged for that. Um, and then we don't do any summer housing um, storage or any storaging of personal supplies. Um, can you leave your stuff in your room if you're going to be in the same hall or be back on campus next year? We don't offer any storage storage. Um, services for both winter and summer breaks. Thank you, Melinda. I was going to um, ask that. Um, this one's for David. How often do students need to do laundry? That depends on the student. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell the story, but uh, my first year here, um, I was like, oh my God, I need all this stuff. So I went and overbought. I bought so many black socks and so many white shirts and so many pairs of underwear that I didn't have to do laundry for like two months because I had way too much. It really depends on the person, you know? Um, uh, I would say, how often do you do laundry at home? That's probably how often you're doing laundry here. Once a week, once, twice a week, uh, it depends on the person. On, on average, it's usually about once a week. And yeah. uh, if you're doing laundry, I heavily suggest avoiding Sunday night because that's usually when the traffic is oh, pretty yeah. busy. Um, so at the last session, when we were talking with uh, Karen at Sodexo, uh, she mentioned that um, her experience is that over the weekend, 80% of the students are gone. They are not coming into the dining halls to eat. Uh, and uh, based on that shared information, Christopher wants to know if... Um, uh, is that, is that true from your perspective? Do 80% of your residents leave over every weekend? And uh, are there any strategies that the campus uh, is considering to keep make it a little bit more attractive for students to stay behind? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll give you some little bit of context and then let you know what we're doing. Um, but that is a pretty common trend for a lot of universities our size and specifically how, uh, you know, based on our area and the place to, you know, our town, our city. Um, I had the exact same issue at my 
two previous institutions. And what it usually turns into is people want to go home and so they don't want to do anything on, on the weekends. And then when we try to host things on the weekends, no one's here because everyone want to go home. So we're going to stop hosting things on the weekends because people don't he stay here because they went home. And it kind of leads, kind of leads into this little um, sad spiral. Um, but I will say that that is something that um, we have talked about um, an insane amount. I'm going to let Matt talk a little bit about some of the planning with that. Uh, but we have already addressed some stuff for residence life specifically on when it comes to activities, programs, and how we're just going to approach the community in general, as well as approach um, the university and working with some of the partnerships that we've started to uh, encourage people to stay around on campus. And then let you know that we have also had, or at least I have had a couple uh, conversations with the president of the youth university, our new interim president, who has brought up this uh, exact same question of, I'm hearing that it's dead, you know, on the weekends or late at night, what's the plan? And so um, we already have something in place to talk about it um, that has, I believe it's doubled or tripled from last year, but I'm gonna go ahead and let Matt kind of talk about what he's been working on all summer for this. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, so I've been working on trying to upgrade our, you know, roster of programs that we have throughout the semester. And I can tell you that we most definitely will be having um, programs on weekends throughout the semester. I've heard other things from other departments talking about extending hours and gyms and stuff on the weekend. Um, and yeah, definitely a big focus on the first year students as a lot of them, you know, haven't gotten to lay the land yet and they don't know the area, but yeah. And just introducing students through programs to different things around Vallejo and just the general area. Um, if you're not super familiar with the area, we are only five minutes away from um, the San Francisco Ferry, and it's a straight shot right to the ferry building in San Francisco, so there are a lot of students that do indulge in that, but yeah, the plan is to have a lot more things going on on the weekends on campus, and yeah, and there's, yeah, brunch is pretty popular, I'll tell you that much on campus, so. And some of the things we've done specifically is um, Matt's been working with the athletics department on how we increase attendance over there so we can have more um, community and involvement and spirit at, at games, um, as well as get some opportunities to get our residents in their facilities. Other thing is working with Peer Health and doing some more education related programs. Um, I about two days ago had a meeting with Sodexo with their um, marketing and activities team on what we can do to start partnering up with Sodexo a little bit more. Um, so they have some pretty cool programs already planned for this year. One of them, they're actually doing something with Red Bull, who's going to come to campus and do a testing of some of their new products that they're actually about to roll out. And so cadets will be the ones who can work with their um, Q&A team to determine what flavors they like and what they should sell, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but either way, like I said in the very beginning, we kind of bleed into everything. And so our goal is how do we get them here? That includes things even like Title IX. I've worked with the Title IX director to have start, start having some of her uh, programs in-house. So actually be in the residence hall. You don't have to go down to the main campus to, to attend some of the stuff like this. Um, working with uh, Megan Nance and EOP to start having communities. One of the things we're also working about is designated study nights. So we can actually have some of the faculty show up in the residence hall and do some tutoring here. Um, but whatever we can do to get life action things happening here to where you're not just leaving on the weekend. A lot of that, again, kind of relies on the cadets to be around and be willing to attend. But I think we can buy their love with a bunch of food and other items. So that's really what we're going to do uh, this semester to make it work. Thank you, Tim. Um, just a point of clarification, when we mentioned Sodexo, that's the company that uh, runs our dining center and is responsible for um, all, all things food on campus. We have a contract with them, and that's the model at uh, most universities where um, this outside firm uh, will do the do the food for the university. Um, cadets are assigned the same room uh, for the entire school year. They yes. are assigned. Yes, they're assigned the same room for the entire school year. If for some reason it needs to be changed or addressed, well, we have a process for doing that, but they, they would reach out to one of our staff members to assist them. But um, for the entire year, once they get their spot, we they keep that one unless um, they feel they need to make a change and work with our staff to get that done. Um, so around the going home, um, yes, freshmen go home uh, just as much as uh, the, the other years. Um, it, it probably depends, again, academics play a role and um, what their assignments are play a role, what else is going on uh, with families plays a role. So there's there are many factors. And like Tim pointed out, we are uh, working towards 
changing a little bit of uh, campus life so that we can keep them here more often. Uh, I think too, one of the things we're also push is their involvement on what, what they want. And we're gonna be doing a lot of assessment in general of just, okay, if you want something to do, what would get you to come out of your room? Because that was definitely something that I uh, saw a lot at my previous institution. That sounds cool, but do I actually wanna put on clothes and go over there and do it? <laughs> and so it's like, all right, so what could I do to convince you to get dressed, to come out and hang out with us for an hour? What, what would get you to roll out of bed? Obviously for me, it'd be a chicken nugget. If you have chicken nuggets, that, that would be there. Um, but what does that look like for each one of our cadets in, in working with them and doing that? And that's part of a lot of the reason we're doing these partnerships with various departments, because if we do something for the athletes, we're pretty confident we can get the athletes to attend. If we do something with other organizations, we're pretty certain we can get them to attend. Um, so that is the goal is to just get a lot more involvement. So we're not doing just what we like or the same things we've always done. If we can get uh, cadet involvement, resident involvement in general, a hope would be if they kind of have some sort of autonomy in the, the activities that we have, they'd be more interested in attending. So strongly suggest you reach out to our staff and just talk to us. If you want us to do something, we'll do it because that's what we're here for. And, and that's true for um, some other uh, groups that are on campus. So every student is part of the core and uh, the core of cadets has its own uh, leadership and uh, organizational structure, and they are happy to uh, create programming for students. And similarly, the student body, which is called ASCMA, Associated Students of uh, California Maritime Academy, uh, often offer uh, programming weekend uh, and weekends and uh, weekday evenings. So it a lot of it has depends on um, the students. Uh, desire to uh, stay connected and participate. Um, is there any coordination with students at other schools like Cal and um, for social events? Uh, yeah, we do work with other organizations uh, or other um, institutions in, the, in our CSU system. Um, takes a little bit more work from the cadets part, um, but some of the organizations actually, um, they'll have Zoom meetings and then we've sent cadets to go to um, conferences. I know we have some of ours that are actually going, I believe it's next Saturday, to go uh, participate in one of the bigger CSU events. Um, so we do participate in that as well. It really kind of depends on that level of involvement. And very much what you said previously, it's it really kind of depends on the cadet and what their bandwidth is. The other thing too is just the amount of hours and there's so many things going on that this all sounds awesome right now. And then you're kind of in the middle of October and you're just exhausted. So it's just one of those things of just making sure you know how much time you have to get all your stuff done and then what you can do to get involved even more. So again, it really kind of comes down to how involved your cadet or your student is. Um, I think we've gone a little uh, off topic on uh, sense of belonging and engagement on campus. Uh, please remember on August 15th, we're gonna have a whole panel of people who put on programming and will share what their plans are and what works and what, what um, their roles are. So with that, I recognize we're seven minutes over and this is the first time that's happened. Um, do cadets receive demerits in the residence halls? Quickly, we have, that's- Yes, uh, they can. It does not necessarily come from our office. It would come from uh, the assistant dean of students and dealing with um, their process. It's, it's, we don't directly oversee that and someone correct me if I am wrong. Um, we do work in tandem with that, but we are not necessarily going out and saying we're going to get a demerit here and there. Um, whatever, we, whatever we can do in-house to address it before it gets to that point is what we would prefer to do because we really don't want to interrupt their, um, their time here, or their education here. But if it does get to that point, we will involve the dean of students in their, in their office. Thank you. Um, and we, we're always encouraging students to uh, study, not just the weekends. Um, with that, um, I'm going to bid our presenters adieu because they've been uh, here so late in the evening. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here and sharing uh, the you know words of wisdom and experience. Thank you, David, for sharing how things go for from a cadet's perspective. That's very meaningful. Um, and of course, uh, for the families who have joined us, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. And um, if in the meantime, you think of anything else, please uh, don't hesitate to email us at orientation at and um, we'll get you the answers you're looking for. Thank you again and have a wonderful evening. What's left of it? 
Bye. Thank you guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Y'all take care.